you wanna play, do ya, do ya? One of the best things about Christmas time is playing games. All the family together, we are big game players. What? We like playing games. Oh, you know what I mean. So I thought I would run through with you a few of the games that we love to play in this house so that if you are searching for inspiration now that Christmas time is on its way, you can take inspiration from what I'm going to say. I made a rhyme. This is gonna be a weird one, isn't it? I've got two kids, I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old, so I'm focusing on games that you can at least play with a five-year-old. The two-year-old can only really join in with a few of them. So I'm not gonna mention really the well-known ones here because you already know about those. You don't need me to tell you about Hungry Hippos and Connect Four and Snakes and Ladders and Ludo and Guess Who. Oh, I do love Guess Who. It's a good game. I thought I would just tell you about some of the other ones that maybe you don't know so well. So, with that in mind, this is our current family favourite, Dobble. Love it. So my five-year-old got it for his birthday. Um, ooh, two cards are stuck together. Oh, it's lovely having small children. Oh. So the aim of the game is you each have a card and a card goes in the middle and you literally just have to find there will be one picture on your card that matches a picture on this card. And that is true for everybody. So you all just sit there, mm, look at your cards, and the first person to spot what matches wins the card, if you see what I mean. So with this one, what have they got the same? The padlock. So I have a padlock on this card, I have a padlock on that card. But the next player will have had, say, this card. So what did they have that was the same, that they were racing me to find? They had... Uh, sometimes it's really obvious. Oh, pencil. And sometimes it's like impossible. Pencil. So whoever spotted it first, was it me with my lock? Was it them with their pencil? Who knows? Sometimes you see it instantly. And sometimes you're like, there's nothing the same on this card. My one is broken. It still blows my mind that it's possible that every card has. So I'm still trying to fix Oh, I know who that is. That's my youngest. That boy. Why, Ayara? It's so simple. Really good. And it's that small. It takes up no space in your house. It goes quite nicely with my jumper. <laughs> That's the main reason I like it. It goes well with my jumper. This is another game that he got for his birthday. It's a slow burner. I like it because it's very cute. The aim of the game, it's called peek a doodle do I mean, what's not to like about that? I'll tell you what's not to like is that's how it's stored. Everything just falls out. So that's one thing not to like about it, but I do like it. Uh, you basically put all these little chickens out on nests and then you have to pick up your chicken thingy and if there's an egg underneath it, you get the egg and then you put your chicken thing back down. Not in here, this is the box. And you keep going like that and if you pick up a chicken and it doesn't have an egg under it, uh -uh, you lose a life. And so it goes and so it goes until you're out. And initially you're like, well, they've all got eggs under them to start with, this is easy. Oh, that one doesn't have an egg under it anymore. Um, yeah, and it seems really easy and a bit rubbish. But as time goes on, it's really good and it's really hard. And you're like, I know where the eggs are. I don't. I was wrong. And then you play it in reverse and you hide them back under. So it's really fun. Again, the two-year-old can't really join in with it because he just picks up all the chickens. Doesn't really pay attention. But the five-year-old likes it. Good game with small kids. He could doodle do. What do we got next? Ooh, I mentioned Snakes and Ladders earlier. We are big Snakes and Ladders fans. Um, I really like it. I like it for the fact it's really good for math skills from a boring point of view. I'm that kind of parent. I like education, education, education. Our Snakes and Ladders is really used and really battered. So this is a sort of slightly different take on it. What I do like about this one and what my little boy really likes about this one and what the two-year-old also likes about this one is it has spinners. 
everyone loves a spinner. Um, so you've got an option with a red card. Uh, you blow the whistle. Are you going to get a free, free kick? So a free go. Are you going to miss a turn? Are you going to have to go back to the start? And then at the end to score a goal, you spin the spinner. Goal! Saved! Saved! Goal! That's just a little extra dimension on the traditional snakes and ladders. So I'm a big fan of that. Orchard toys, I find most of them I really like. They are quite reliable for having a little spinner in, aren't they? Orchard toys really love a spinner. Some of their games are a bit boring. But, what's it called? Football game. Oh, they took a long time coming up with that title, didn't they? Hmm, what should we call this football game? Football game. Oh, geniuses. But it's good, and I like it. Again, that will be an easy one for my youngest to grow into, maybe rather than the traditional snakes and ladders. So we like that one. This game. Talking about how I am a slightly boring education parent, I got this for Christmas last year, and my eldest was four at the time, so he was probably a little bit young for it. But we did play it, and he did get it, and it's basically just a description game. So you have your little egg timer, and then you're going against the time. You have a load of cards. We might not play this properly. I'm just realising I'm about to explain the rules to you, and I think we've made up our own rules. So the way we play it is there's the egg timer and you literally just describe your card and we all guess it. So my eldest gets two turns of the egg timer versus me and my husband who only get one. Bloody kids. Uh, and it is just a describing thing. So you get out of the bath and you want to dry off. You use a towel. You're in Australia, you throw a stick and it comes back and hits him in the eye. You threw a boomerang. It's an animal. It goes, meh, meh. It's a sheep. And then however many you get right is the number of spaces you move around the board. So it's pretty simple, but for his kind of descriptive <coughs> skills, oh, excuse me, for his uh, descriptive skills and um, just vocabulary and things, really good really really good so i would recommend alias for some reason he calls it the family game i don't know why do you know how sometimes things get a name and it just sticks so this isn't called alias in our house this is called the family game Can we play the family game let's play the family game we also are a big fan of a card game look how used this is we haven't had this that long <laughs> this isn't an unusual game this is uno but it's the junior version flamingo crocodile uh, so it's just a bit more child friendly than the traditional ludo but still complicated so you've got a little plus twos you've got to pick up two cards you get a little uh, wild card you can choose what color comes next so it's still got some complicated elements to it but easier for young kids to get into it's quite good we like now those are the more unusual games the other ones you've probably heard of good old family bay pop up pirate we love Papa Pirate. The reason I've mentioned these couple, even though you have probably seen them a lot before, is because they are just the best for my boys to play alone together. These are the first two games, Papa Pirate and Crocodile Dentist, where they can just play it by themselves and make the pirate pop up and then the reverse, make the crocodile pop down. <gasps> he got me. So I'm mentioning these, even though they are very well known, they're worth a mention because they are the two games that my boys will play by themselves. And then one last little shout out to good old Top Trumps. Don't forget Top Trumps. As a stocking filler, get some Top Trumps. And I tell you why, educational mum's coming back out again. For my son's numbers, amazing. So he... Obviously, you know, one to 10, blah, 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 fine. But these use bigger numbers and he has now grasped numbers up to, you know, if he's got Camarasaurus, we probably say all the dinosaurs wrong, Camarasaurus, Camarasaurus, we say Camarasaurus. Uh, he can read all those numbers. So on there, you've got two and three, 18, but you've also got 150 and you've got 20,000 and he will recognize what 
20,000 is? 5,500. That's a complicated number. But he knows it because... Dinosaur top trumps. Why I'm here, I don't know. Just hand him a pack of cards and the boy's away. Again, top trumps is one of those ones where you're sneaking in a bit of the old learning. Pretending it's fun. We're having fun, we're having fun. We're not, you're learning, you're learning. Ha, ha, ha. So there you go. Those are our family favourite games. If you are looking for some game inspiration this Christmas, I recommend any or all of those. Obviously, with every game, the result will be that somebody will cry. So, good luck with that.